Um, yeah, um, I apologize if the questions are questions that you get commonly get at, uh, asked, but um, I wanted to yeah, first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, first off, I wanted to. Yeah, I was just curious about your panel, um, which I believe is entitled "The Science Behind a, a Possible Multiverse." That you're going to be. Yes. Uh, can you talk about that? Uh, yes, I, I'm going to talk. You know, like, like the title says, uh, the combination of both uh, comparing uh, the uh, um, science of multiverse versus the science fiction uh, of multiverse. Uh, and there is, you know, multiverse sounds like something very far fetched, and yet it is a concept that over the last 20 years has. Uh, uh, generally been, uh, become accepted by most cosmologists and uh, a vast number of, uh, of uh, uh, theoretical physicists. One of the interesting aspects is uh, the, actually the complexity of the name or title multiverse. Uh, the, in science fiction, there tends to be one type of multiverse. In science and cosmology, there are actually four distinct classes of multiverse, and several papers have been written on these. And when I say, uh, you know, there are, I'm talking about theoretically, there are uh, four classes of multiverse. Max Tegmark at the University of Chicago uh, ha has written several papers on his uh, classification scheme of the multiverse. Uh, and the classification scheme has four different levels of multiverse uh, in it. So I'm going to be talking about that and, and just showing, uh, you know, uh, discussing which one most aligns with the, the you know, science fiction and comic view of it. Okay. And that, okay. Happens, and that happens to be what's classified as, and I'll go over all four levels uh, in a second, but uh, the, the one that happens to be used in science fiction and comics the most is that of the parallel universe that you mentioned in your, in your second question. That is classified as level three multiverse. It's also known uh, by, yeah, by yeah, in, uh, as uh, Everett Universe, uh, accrediting to the concept to the mathematician and theoretical physicist Hugh Everett, who proposed parallel universe as a consequence of quantum mechanics back in the 1950s and 60s. But the four levels of universe that uh, Max Tegmark has proposed, and uh, by the way, if you're interested in the source of those and in looking at some of the initial papers, and, and um, they're basically written for a general uh, public uh, to, under, to, to uh, understand, too. There's a book out edited by Bernard Carr, C-A-R-R, uh, entitled Universe or Multiverse? Question mark. And this is uh, a collection of papers that were presented um, at a conference on multiverse at uh, Stanford University uh, um, um, about 10 years ago. I see. A, all of the leaders in the field have uh, papers there, um, and, and many other people, including uh, John Barrow, uh, George Alice, Stephen Hawking, um, Andre Linde. Uh, one of the founders of uh, inflation theory, um, Max Tegmark himself, Leonard Susskind of Stanford, uh, Lee Smolin, Don Page, who was a student of, uh, uh, of, of Stephen Hawking, uh, uh, actually a, a postdoctoral researcher, is well known for several papers he's written with, with Stephen, and, and Don Page is a, a friend of mine. Uh, and they look at both the philosophical uh, and the scientific aspects of multiverse in this paper, uh, excuse me, in the book, okay. uh, and in particular in his uh, contributions uh, to the book, Max Tegmark goes, proposes his uh, four levels of multiverse. The first level is the one that uh, pretty much is accepted by all cosmologists, and th that one is the idea that our universe is more than just the visible universe that we can see. Our universe is 13.8 billion years old. Uh, and that means that with light traveling, you know, by, by definition, the speed of light, uh, one light year is the distance that light travels in one year. So the light, that the, the furthest away in our universe that we can see right now is light that was emitted 13.8 billion light years uh, ago. We can't see things past that far back. But there is 
is likely you know, more universe beyond there. The universe, as we observe, is uh, uh, pretty continued. Is pretty, you know, uh, um, uh, pretty standard. There's no real variations in it. I mean, there's there's galaxies and galactic clusters spread throughout. There's patterns in that, but on the galactic scale. There is nothing particular that changes in the universe. So uh, that means that we don't expect there to be any real boundaries beyond the visible universe. We expect the universe to just continue. Uh, and uh, often it's assumed that the, that universe the beyond us is uh, likely infinite or you know, much, much faster than we, can, uh, than we would perceive. So that whole collection of both uh, the, the visible and the non visible universe, and our, our visible universe is likely just a small, infinitesimal fraction of the whole thing, is what's referred to as a multi, uh, as a level one multiverse. Okay. And right. what sort of makes it, a, uh, why uh, the Max Tegmark called it a universe, uh, multiverse rather than mm-hmm. just the total uh, universe, is his idea that there are finite arrangements, that a finite number of, of um, atoms or fundamental particles could produce. And so he worked out some probabilities of how far away in the total universe it would take for overlaps of uh, massive objects. And he, he came up with some interesting probabilities, and those are in, his, in some of his papers too, uh, like um, how far away in the universe it would take to find a solar system that look, that has uh, that looks just like ours with the... Uh, So there, what you're saying is there might be an existence where I'm the physicist and you're the comic geek. Exactly. Yeah, same thing like that where we chose exactly opposite careers. Interesting. You know, that, could be that, this is my first question. Same careers, but I'm, right now I'm wearing a green and yellow Baylor shirt. I could be wearing uh, a red and a red and orange yeah. Baylor shirt. <laughs> uh, and so minor things like that to vastly different things. That's that's um, incredible. And uh, this is the idea of level one, and this this has been used in science fiction. Mm-hmm. Then we go to, but but throughout this whole multi level one multiverse, the laws of physics are the same. Everywhere in it, there is gravity as we know it, and electromagnetics, and strong and weak nuclear as we know it. We can pass from one region in this universe to another. We can go from the visible part to the into the non visible part if we could travel faster than light. We, we wouldn't find any change to the physical laws. The next step in the in types of universes is what the take mark is defined as level two multiverse. And I actually do my research in this area. Uh, this is the, this is the idea that there are uh, multiple level one universes where each level one universe or a multiverse has its own physical laws. So uh, there could there would likely be one another uh, multiverse where uh, that has both gravity and electromagnetics, but it might not have the strong weak nuclear forces, or it might have instead of our four forces, it might have twelve different physical forces. Uh, the only thing in common 
generally between the different universes in a multiverse is they all have to obey some set of governing rule that specifies the range of forces that could be allowed and that generally they will all have gravity. Um, and, and string theory, which is my research specialty, is an example of this. String theory predicts that uh, there can be, at any given time, somewhere a around uh, one with 500 zeros after it, physical level one multiverses that all have all one, 10 to the 500, uh, that is again, the one with 500 zeros after it, uh, that all 10 to the 500 or so of those, um, and that's just an approximate, approximate number order of magnitude that's used, all of those have different physical laws. Um, and so what we hope to do in string theory show that if string theory is true, our universe is consistent with the pattern that we would find among all of those. Not that we can actually prove our universe is true and exists within it, but we can, we can just support the idea probabilistically. Um, and, and this is real science. You can look up in any of the textbooks on uh, string theory, and it's now called M-theory, uh, in, in uh, the you know, physics textbooks, and you'll find that number 10 to the 500, inevitably. Um, and uh, I studied, and I earned my degree in, in uh, my PhD in string theory at Caltech, studying under one of the founders of string theory, uh, John Schwartz. And then I, I earned my degree there in 1993, and I've been working on it since. Um, okay. Um, and then, okay, go ahead. Level three is it goes back to the idea rather than in level one where you can have parallel universes vast distances away. Level three takes the idea of Hugh Everett, the mathematician, who who theorized that quantum mechanics says that every time there is a choice, either a choice in nature itself or a choice that you or I make. I, uh, one universe splits into all possibilities. And that doesn't say they split in, at physically different points, but they sort of, they split in realities. And uh, every time there's a split, we continue to exist in one reality and also the others, but we are only aware of ourselves in one existence. There's others that might be, again, that made the different choices. There's another pair in a different reality where our careers are switched. Uh, but it, it's sort of, you know, different, the, there's a reality difference between those universes, the parallel universes, versus a physical distance reality in the level one. But uh, Tegmark and others have shown that uh, the complete range of possibilities, given our universe is infinite, as a level one universe would match up. Uh, it really, it's either whether you see it sort of in reality difference or physical distance distance. Level four, is the, is the idea that is probably most debated. Level three is debated. Level four is even more debated. Level four is the idea that there is a cl um, collection of multiverses uh, of level one, two, and three uh, based on mathematical consistency. There could, and, and the, the mathematical laws can be different in each level four multiverse within it. Um, and exactly what that means is hotly debated. Uh, some people like um, like Don Page would say he doesn't really even, he doesn't accept the concept of level four as Max Tegmark would define it and um, et cetera. It, it, gets, it goes past physics and it goes into uh, philosophy, much like my, one might many argue level three itself does. Uh, but that's science. And so I'm, I'm going to talk at the work at the conference and show just how, how comics and science fiction of a whole have made good use of those themes. Yeah. And you can find the use of the other questions that you're asking. You can find this use of multiverse, you know, ideal for comics, and especially Marvel and, and the DC, when they want to rejuvenate their uh, heroes. Mm -hmm. and just like, um, you know, DC did uh, uh, just two years ago. And they're already doing again. Okay, Before so that, they did it in the mid 1980s. Just they, so um, they, yeah, yes. eliminated the Earth One, Earth Two parallel uh, Justice League, Justice Society concept, and uh, had uh, presented that was back when they were doing Crisis of Infinite Earths. Right. And the Earths combined in, in, in uh, some of the Earths combined together, and you ended and we ended up with um, an Earth that uh, rather than having either a Justice League in the present or just a society in the past uh, merged together.
together somehow to have both Justice Society and Justice League in the same Earth history. Okay, and just so li- just so listeners are aware, the the question that I had asked was the comic books that came to mind when exploring this um, idea of a multiverse. Um, I, I just wanted to throw that in there so they're they're clear on what what your what led to that question, even though you 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 stated it well. Uh, yeah, they did that, and uh, I've also enjoyed the recent series called Multiverse that DC has done, and it's just it's explored under that idea of looking in in uh, you know in, in different universes. They've, they've thrown in you know a lot of different ideas of superheroes, and, and um, Marvel has done that too. Uh, I followed more along the DC line, uh, in particular where they were where they had uh, alternate realities where. Uh, Superman is president of the Earth, and the rest of and the rest of the Justice League is his uh, are his cabinet officials. Yeah. Um, the, the secretaries of state and uh, you know and defense and all of that. Uh, yeah. Some of those were the alternate realities have been very original that they've done. Yeah. Okay. And they're doing it again starting this month. They've, they've, they've combined the their current universe of younger heroes. You know more. Uh, uh, 20s uh, uh, age Superman with a new uniform and everything, and likewise for all the other Justice League, they've they've they've, they've uh, something like that. Or I think is that is encountering is... the old uh, Earth Prime and everything, the old Earth with the combined Justice League, Justice Society. Uh, I haven't read any of those comics yet, but I look forward to. I think I think you're talking about Convergence. Is that the the? Convergence. I'm talking about the Convergence series. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and I think Marvel's Marvel's doing something where they're combining their Ultimate Universe with their regular Marvel Universe and something called it, in Secret Wars. They brought Secret Wars back, so uh, I, I take it you're a DC guy by the by, by the sound of um, by what you were saying there. You're more along the lines of, of you follow DC. I more. follow up more on DC now. I've, I've been a comic collector for you know, for uh, 35 years. And I, for a while, I was collecting both, and eventually I sold off my Marvel collection to uh, complete more of my DC collection. Um, although I like Marvel movies better. Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, I, I think those are done much better than the uh, typical DC Superman, Batman movies. Yeah. Um, I've enjoyed the last Superman. I look forward to Batman Superman. But before that, I, I just I don't think they're comparable yeah. in quality. Well, let's let's jump ahead to the question about uh, will this be your first Comic Palooza, or have you have you done Comic Palooza and other conventions in the past? And... Last year was my first, and I gave a talk on. Uh, I was visiting NASA for a couple of months at the time. I was on uh, a committee investigating um, uh, um, advanced propulsion systems, so I, I gave a talk on the um, history of NASA uh, last year and uh, an organization that uh, a couple of our Baylor uh, students have founded called Icarus Interstellar. And so I gave a report on what Icarus was doing at, at the NASA and, and some of NASA in general. Nice. And so, yeah, this will be my year there. Yeah, what are your thoughts? What's your personal opinion on these pop culture conventions? On, on what is that? On, on uh, what oh, convention? No. On the culture of the convention? Yeah, I was just, I was, I was just curious on what your, what, what your thoughts are on, on comic, you know, comic book conventions and all these pop culture conventions. I, and, I think it's, I think there's a, just for the sake of comics themselves and science fiction, I think they uh, I enjoy them and, and like to see them. Uh, and then for the sake also of, you know, things like uh, uh, these uh, series of, uh, of uh, science and science fiction talks are worthwhile to you know, right. keep the general public informed of, of uh, cutting edge science, what we're really doing. Yeah. Even even in ensuring just how close, you know, at, at times, you know, science fiction uh, copies science. Right. You know, right. I know everybody who's a Star Trek fan knows all of the you know, ideas that Star Trek presented that eventually sure. uh, came to fruition. Right. Uh, I think we, we can we can see that and appreciate. I think science fiction fans can appreciate uh, science uh, more than the than the general public too. Yeah, and it seems like um, comic Palooza. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was, I was one of the founding members of an organization that uh, I like to focus on both. It, we, we, it was called the uh, uh, Nebraskans for the Advancement of Space Development. And one of our main outreaches to the general public was to, we prom- promoted the NASA programs and everything, was to uh, you know, promote NASA through our own Omicron. And we, we had uh, uh, 10 Omicron science fiction, fiction conventions. The last uh, was about uh, 93 or 94. Hmm. Okay. And that, that was medium sized. We we had uh, 
that doesn't compare to anything like the you know, 40 to 50,000 that will be attending uh, Comic Palooza. But uh, we, did, we did good with about, uh, I think the largest attendance we had was about 8,000. You know, I almost want to say that, you know, because the fact that Comic Palooza is in Houston, that these types of conversations, um, you know, exploring, uh, you know, with, I think there's maybe so, a, a few um, guests that are going to be, uh, that are from NASA, and all these scientific, um, um, you know, panels that are happening, probably happen more so here than in any other convention that I can, you know, think of. I could be wrong, but... Um, no, I, I think, you know, and, and it was nice, I've never seen as many um, stands uh, as the NASA had uh, down there last year, just for the general public, and the, the, the displays that they had was, that was fantastic. Yeah. Last year was also my first Comet Palooza. It was the first time I covered it. So I'm looking forward to next weekend. Really looking forward to it. Who are, is there anyone that you're looking forward to seeing um, at the convention next week? Any guests oh, that stand I, out? I enjoy most all of the, uh, of the, of the uh, science fiction related people and, and the comic people. Mm -hmm. I think there's a great guest list on there. Yes. Yep. Um, I've been a fan of uh, I've been a, a fan of uh, of uh, Marvel Agents of Shield, of course. And I, I need to see yeah, uh, Tuesday's uh, two hour episodes. I haven't watched it yet. Okay. So I'm watching that before I get there. Yeah. yeah no spoilers here. Um, okay. So I, you already pretty much told me you're a DC guy, not a Marvel guy. What about Star Wars versus Star Trek? What would be your pick? Uh, Star Trek all the way. I think that the Star Trek universe is much more detailed, much more uh, fleshed out than the Star Wars universe. Um, but I might, uh, but uh, uh, this probably is, is not a majority view, but of all of the Star Trek series, my two favorite are Star Trek Enterprise and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my the, the, um, my personal was the Next Generation. I think that's a, a, a popular answer, but um, Deep Space Nine I enjoyed as well. And I'm definitely a Picard over Kirk person. Yes, <laughs> same here. Same here. I I, I love uh, Patrick Stewart and the work he did on that series. I'd love to see it come back to television. There actually, I've read discussions about um, possibly bringing back Star Trek to television again. So. Oh, that'd be great. Yes. And uh, I have a younger brother who was on the special effects crew for Next Generation 2. Oh, great. Uh, and it's actually, he was on the episode that uh, won um, an Emmy Award for special effects. Nice. Nice. That is cool. Okay, so... Yeah, uh, so I got on, on, on stage a couple of times for Next Generation. Oh, it's nice. From, from two he gave me. Okay. Well, I guess just uh, one last question. Um, in, in the past, um, so many people have had, like, a hard time taking you know science fiction and even scientific theory seriously especially when it comes to topics that you might be discussing like multiverses and you know another you know life outside of our own universe what are your thoughts on all the skepticism and do you see that changing i see that changing i can't blame them though i, I agree it sounds far out but that's why i'm there i you know, work on it i enjoy it you know, I, uh, but there are so many weird concepts of physics that are, you know, that we've proven are definitely true already. Now, I mean, I think it's, it's good if we can, you know, bring that to the attention of the general public. Quantum mechanics, it sounds weird, especially when we take it to the extent of things like Hugh Everett Universe. But, you know, if, if quantum mechanics weren't true, and I look around my office here, you know, how much of this things in this office wouldn't be working. I would not have, you know, any of my uh, lap laptop screens working or the laptops themselves or, you know, anything with with digital electronics. It wouldn't be because the, in the end, semiconductors and transistors work only because of quantum mechanics and, uh, and the uh, transition rules. Yeah. Well, Dr. Cleaver, Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to your panel next weekend, and I look forward to meeting you. Likewise. Good talking with you, Peter. Thank you, sir. I'll talk to you then. Uh-huh. And talk. if you have any uh, questions, and let's see, I, I think I sent you my uh, photo and bio. Oh, yes, yes. I got that. Okay, okay good. Then, yeah, I'd uh, like to meet you there on Saturday. Sounds great. I think I'm on Saturday at 2.30. Uh, Excellent. Thank you, sir. I'll see you there. Good talking, Peter.
Have a good night.